I got a question about um, cloth workflow and I've tested cloth a lot because it's I mean it's really easy to put clothes on characters or things and you know but uh, and have it look nice but I've found it to be kind of not as flexible or as fast as I would like it so I never really use cloth simulations in the traditional sense um, but I just kind of cheat cloth and do fake cloth and use the cloth system to just clothe characters sometimes, but I don't actually use the cloth dynamics. So, um, and just so you know, you know, like in a traditional film pipeline, they would have someone who just does the dynamic. So you would animate the character or whatever. If you're a character animator, then someone else would do all that stuff. So in my workflow, I found it's a little bit too complicated, so I do some simple things to cheat. So I just want to give you an example. So this is just a plane with the head cut out or the polys cut out. So I'm just going to want to make like a real quick poncho kind of thing and then show you how I cheat cloth. So if I'm going to drape this on a character, the character is going to need to have uh, colliders on it. So normally you'd probably want to use like a low polygon proxy or something, but just for this example, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to put colliders on all these polygonal objects. And then I'm going to go to cloth, add a cloth tag, and without even doing anything, I'm just going to, like, let it do its thing. So it's going to drape over the character, and then... Uh, that's a little bit too far. You could also use the relax thing. I mean, I'm not a an expert in this cloth business, but I just want a real simple kind of cloth looking... Okay. So now this, even though these corners are up, this is kind of as clothy as I want it. So I'm going to go current state to object. Oops. And hopefully, so now I have this polygonal object that kind of looks like cloth. Now you're saying, doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of the cloth system? Now I'm not trying to create real dynamic cloth. I'm trying to, you know, I want to create like fake dynamic cloth. So to fix this, I'd want to go into the magnet tool, but you know, without my shortcuts, I don't even know how to do it. Um, so I'm just going to fix up these corners real quick and this little part here. So it's just over his shoulders. And then, you know, you could go in here and fine tune this and make it kind of stick to him or do whatever you want. Um, and you know right now this doesn't have any thickness so this is probably changed in a in a new version of Cinema 4D but they have the cloth nerds object which you can give it a thickness of like one now it has some thickness so now we have this right but when you press play it does nothing right because it's not cloth it's just a polygonal object so of course this isn't going to be dynamic so that you know you could pull the character's arms up and do all the stuff this is just for like a poncho cape kind of thing so if I was going to do this I wanted a character to have this and then I wanted him to be able to to, uh, to interact with it then I would create some morphs or actually create a rig and bone it or something but this is just for the way I use super cheap cloth so what I'm going to want to do is use deformers like the formula deformer and the wind deformer to kind of make this look like it's dynamic so how do you do that? Because if you go and just put a formula deformer in this cloth, it kind of just indiscriminately deforms the whole thing, right? So this is an old trick um, to use. So let's turn this off so we can see this. And it's going to be using a vertex map on a restriction tag on the deformer to limit it. So this is the way, they might have changed this, but this was the way you, you limited deformers in the old days. So wherever I want this thing to deform I'm gonna you know paint the vertex map heavily so since these edges are out away from intersecting with any geometry let's just you know assume they're gonna be safe right and then just to kinda of fake it a little more or to give it you know just I do like some strips or streaks like randomly around here so that some of the stuff can move and this is like you know hit or miss sometimes so what you want is to kinda imagine that where you're painting these streaks on these points it will be moving and then the stuff that's not is not moving so if you want to give the illusion of like creases or folds then um, you want to have some kind of variety in what is painted and what isn't or else the whole thing will just move or just won't look that good so a good tool to smooth stuff out, vertex maps and stuff, 
in this version it is the paint tool so what I like doing is just going to smooth and then set the strength up and then apply all and see it smooths everything so let's smooth a little bit more okay so now we have a pretty good looking vertex map so just by doing that this doesn't do anything still so you want to add a restriction tag on the deformer and then drop the vertex map in there so now as you can see it's only affecting um, the parts that were painted but that's still like moving too much for our wants so then we can go in here and uh, modify the vertex map so we'll say don't move this please and if we go back to it you can see that now the top part is staying still now this looks more like some kind of uh, like octopus tentacle thing moving so that might be good if that's what you want but you can go in here and check out some of these different modes and I find the key is is to just use little bits of them um, and mix the different types together and then you'll actually you know get what you want out of it so let's let this loop longer so it doesn't look like it's so glitchy so I have that formula deformer and then I'm just gonna copy another one and then maybe add a bit of this and then go in here and add some of this you know as you can see as you start adding more deformers and we can go ahead and turn this back on to make it smoother you're getting a little bit something that looks a little bit more like like cloth and the big difference is is that why is the floor here is that you can actually move this around with the character so I'll, I should show you the difference so let's just say we're gonna make this a child of the chest so now this kinda looks like cloth and you know it's moving with the character right again it's not moving dynamically but if we want to do that we can actually add a jiggle deformer on it that will give it some like dynamic so it kind of looks like it's um moving or it's dynamic so the way you do that is um to create a jiggle deformer and it's the same it would be the same process except you know we already have this vertex map made so just to make this easier so I don't have to keep moving I'm gonna test it let's go add a vibrate tag on this guy's hip so as you can see it's it has some a little bit of dynamic movement on it now and then you know you can adjust these parameters to kind of see what's going on with it that's a little too much but yeah so you can screw around with these and it gives you a pretty decent like you see how it's going through there so then you would probably want to you probably want to create an entirely different um, vertex map for the jiggle deformer but yeah you can you get the idea well I hope you do because if this was a real dynamic cloth we wouldn't be able to do this I wouldn't be able to just grab this character and move him over here and have it just snap back into place and move him you'd have to resim it like run the simulation again so um, I guess I'll give you this the little the little cloth file with just the cloth with the deformers on it or something but you can do a lot with just the deformers and vertex maps if you're creative because Maxon gave us a lot of like really awesome deformers and a lot of them are um, you can animate and just so you don't forget you can also use the MoGraph effectors as um, deformers on regular non MoGraph objects so you know you could put this in there too and you do the same thing like give it a restriction tag and then give it the vertex map so like with this one you want to, this one's using any of these shaders or procedural noise to affect the mesh so let's see global scale so let's turn 
these off so you can kind of see oh that's right we have to shift it to a different mode oh it was working yeah we just need more height so now you can see we have this procedural noise affecting it but we actually want this to be faster so this is a little too strong but you can just adjust this stuff and I mean this is what I'm doing all the time I'm just faking stuff um, and you know adding a bunch of different things on top of each other that will make your your fake look start to look a lot better so now we have a couple different things going on on this uh, this little cape piece and the jiggle deform is probably a little too strong but yeah you can get some pretty good results if you're creative just mixing this stuff up using the deformers and the MoGraph effector so I'll give you this little this little piece right here so you can screw around with it but yeah be creative and experiment and just because the cloth sims or the sims don't work for your workflow doesn't mean you can't come up with something that's I mean it's not as good and it's not dynamic and it's not a true simulation but if you're like me, you know, I'm telling stories, I want to make movies, so it's not about whether that's a physically accurate simulation, it's just whether it performs the purpose that I want it to perform. Like a character has a cape, okay, it looks like he has a cape. You know, and then you come up with those workarounds, like I was saying, like using morphs on this, or actually rigging it, and, you know, using joints or something to open it up, which, um, if you want to see that later, let me know, and I could do something like that, but yeah. Hope uh, this is helpful to some people, and until next time, the bye.